the aircraft here, we're 24 7 putting them under pressure. So the aircrew um, that are flying are using their full duty hours. And uh, so from the moment they wake up for their intelligence preparation, um, so that they understand what's happening on the ground before they launch, um, en route out to the area they're operating in, making sure they've got the situational awareness. For the RAF, this is the front line. Inside Aquiteri, a pair of tornadoes prepare to depart on a combat sortie. They've now been flying these missions for more than four years, helping to destroy Islamic State's grip over vast swathes of Iraq and Syria. Yeah, it'll be people. Sometimes it'll be the equipment that we that we find there, um, tunnels uh, and other targets set. So we really are flexible to meet whatever those commanders on the ground need to put Daesh under pressure and defeat them. Since the RAF flew its first combat sorties against IS or Daesh back in September 2014, these jets plus drones based in the Middle East have launched 1,700 airstrikes. New footage shows some of those recent missions. The RAF say this was an IS truck bomb factory and close up you can see the guided weapon about to hit its target. Elsewhere, the RAF hit a vehicle-borne IED, the impact setting off a huge secondary explosion. Um, it's very much compressed now, so 98% of the land that was uh, taken uh, by Daesh um, over four years ago uh, has now been liberated, uh, either by uh, forces um, in Syria, such as the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, or by the Iraqi Security Forces. Um, and actually they're now squeezed and compressed uh, into an area which is close to the Iraqi border uh, and raises up the middle Euphrates River Valley, the Merv as we call it, um, into, into Syria. But I think it's also important to say that, um, that Daesh isn't defeated yet. Uh, although most of Daesh's fighters are compressed into that area uh, and obviously there's very fierce fighting that the Air Force is supporting at the moment in that area, uh, we're also doing a lot as well to help the Iraqi security forces in their own country as they counter what could be an insurgency. While IS has vastly shrunk as a fighting force, the cost of Opshada has risen sharply. In the first year of operations back in 2014, the UK spent just shy of £50 million. Over the following two years, that figure rose tenfold. And in the last financial year, 2017 to 18, the bill for fighting Daesh reached more than 580 million. For the RAF, Shada has been the highest tempo operation of the past 25 years. But with Islamic State now effectively defeated on the battlefield and contained in a small area of Syria, the question for commanders is how much longer do they continue this mission? We're really there at the invitation of the Iraqi government uh, and even though Daesh is, is largely eliminated uh, in the heaviest concentrations that it was, it still provides a, a considerable problem to the Iraqi government and they will re uh, require support, uh, not just in capacity building that we're doing there uh, with their armed forces but also the physical support of our air forces as well. In Syria it's a difficult problem because the Syrian regime has been unwilling or unable um, to counter Daesh throughout much of its country. Um, so. Uh, because we're still defending Iraqi territory, that's why we are fighting uh, in the skies above Syria in order to uh, eliminate Daesh if we possibly can. Although 79 nations are now signed up to the coalition against IS, only four, the US, UK, France and the Netherlands, are flying regular combat sorties. And with Tornado due to retire next spring, could the RAF's new F-35 soon be thrust into the fight? So the F-35 is available for us um, and, and the F-35 um, will reach a, a, a combat capability in December this year. Uh, obviously the squadrons are still working up at the moment. Uh, with F-35 as well, uh, it has to be neatly tied into the carrier programme. Uh, that's uh, really of significant national importance to us as well. While overall the tempo is downward, September was actually the RAF's busiest period for seven months. The UK remains the second largest contributor to Operation Inherent Resolve behind the US. And for now, for these aircrew, the mission goes on. The RAF still very much at the forefront of the fight.